Hey Squeaks, you look like you're ready for a day of fun in the sun. And for good reason. It's so nice outside. There's something to like about all the seasons. Fall has beautiful leaves and you get to bust out all of your favorite sweaters. In the winter, you can do all sorts of fun stuff in the snow, like skiing and building snowmen. Spring is so beautiful, and I love going to the pond to watch the baby ducks. But to me, there's nothing better than a warm, sunny summer day. And speaking of the sun, we've come up with lots of fun experiments you can do when it's nice and sunny. Do you wanna try some of them out today, Squeaks? Great, but first, Let's remind ourselves what exactly the sun is and how it makes us warm so we can have a better idea of how our experiments work. Oh, hey, Squeaks. Oh, you're up early. Oh, the sun woke you up and you couldn't get back to sleep? That happens to me sometimes, too. The sun is shining really brightly out there, but on the bright side, it's going to be a perfect day for our hike around the fort. Yeah, that's the spirit. You know, we don't often think about the sun. You're right, unless it's shining right in our faces. But it makes you think, what is the sun really? Hey, did I hear someone ask a question about the sun? Oh, hi, Sam. Our friend Sam the Bat is calling from the Fort's observatory. Sam is a bit of an astronomer, which means he's someone that studies astronomy. Astronomy is the study of things that are in space. Things like other planets, the moon, and the stars. Stars like Earth's sun. Yep, the sun is a star, just like the ones you might be able to see in the sky at night. And it's the center of our solar system. That's the part of space we live in, and it includes the sun and all the planets that travel around it, like Earth. In fact, the Earth takes about 365 days to go all the way around the sun. In other words, it takes one year. So if you're six years old, that means the Earth has gone around the sun six times since you were born. Cool. And what's even cooler about the sun is how hot it is. Well, maybe cooler isn't the right word, but it is really interesting. Like all stars, our sun is a ball of burning gases. You're right, Squeaks. There are also gases here on Earth, like in the air that we're breathing right now but the gases on Earth are a lot colder than the ones in the sun. Right, the gases in the sun are really hot and they make light and heat, lots of it. How hot is the sun? Well, imagine you're playing outside on a nice warm summer day. It's about 27 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit and you feel a little hot and sweaty. Well, the surface of the sun is about 5,700 degrees Celsius or more than 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's really, really hot. Anything that gets too close to the sun would burn up. It's true. And the sun's not only hotter than Earth, it's a lot wider, over 100 times wider. Oh, good idea, Squeaks. We can make a model that shows what 100 times wider looks like. We use models to help us understand or explain something in the world around us. We can use a ball or other toy to be a model of a planet. So with a model, we can use some things we found around the fort to show how big the sun is compared to the Earth. Good idea. Astronomers use models all the time. So let's use this pin to represent Earth in our model. If the Earth was the size of the end of this pin, which is pretty small, the sun would be about the size of this basketball. That's a big difference. It is. But you know, the sun is only kind of medium size when you compare it to other stars. Like red dwarf stars are smaller than our sun. In fact, they're some of the smallest stars in space. On our model, they would only be about as big as a postage stamp. Then there are super giant stars. Like the name says, those are super giant. They're over a thousand times wider than our sun. In our model, a star like that would be as wide as a skyscraper is tall. Whoa! We need a bigger fort to hold that model. Oh, good question. Squeak says that he's seen pictures of the sun and it looks much bigger than the stars he sees in the night sky. So why is that? If other stars are actually much bigger than the sun, why do they look so small? That's because the sun is the closest star to our Earth. Other stars are so far away that even in our fastest rocket, it would take thousands and thousands of years to get there but the sun is much closer. I mean, it's still about 150 million kilometers away, 
which is pretty far. That means if you try to drive to the sun at the same speed you can drive on the highway, it would still take you over 170 years to get there. But it turns out that distance is pretty perfect for our planet. The sun's heat and light make it possible for all sorts of plants and animals, including us, to live on the earth. Any closer and the earth would be too hot. And if it was farther away, it would be too cold. Oh, that's just like the story Goldilocks and the Three Bears. As stars go, our sun is just right. And you know one more thing about the sun? When it comes up, that means it's time for bats like me to take a nap. Hope you and Squeaks have fun on your hike today. Let's start today with an easy experiment, Squeaks. I think the first thing we should do is make a rainbow. <laughs> I know. Making a rainbow doesn't sound very easy, but trust me, it is. All of the colors of a rainbow are already in sunlight, and all we need to see them is a glass of water and a window. Don't believe me? Check this out. Who doesn't love a little rain now and then? Rain showers make the world look fresh and clean, and they make puddles for us to jump in. Sometimes a rainy day can be extra special when we get to see a rainbow. But you don't need rain, or even to be outside, to see a rainbow. You can make your very own rainbow right in your house. All you need is a clear, plain glass, some water, a piece of white paper, and a sunny day. So are you ready to make a rainbow? First, find a bright, sunny spot in your house. The brighter, the better. So next to a window works best. Now, put the paper down flat in the sunlight. Then fill your glass with water until it's a little over half full. Next, carefully set the glass of water down on the paper. Do you see a rainbow? If you don't, gently pick up the glass and lift it straight up away from the paper until you see a rainbow appear on the piece of paper. If it doesn't work the first time, you might need to put the glass down slowly and try again or carefully tip the glass just a little in the beam of sunlight. Once you see a rainbow on the paper, look at it carefully. How many colors do you see? It might be hard to tell, but a rainbow is made of the colors red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. So where did this rainbow come from? The fact is, all of these colors are always in sunlight. We just can't see them because they're all mixed together. But when sunlight moves from the air into the water in the glass, it bends in a special way. When it bends, the light separates into all of the colors of the rainbow. We call this bending refraction. We see rainbows outside whenever there's a lot of sunlight and a lot of water in the air, like during or right after a rainstorm, or in the mist at the bottom of a waterfall, or even around the spray from a sprinkler or a hose. The water in the air acts just like the water in your glass. The light refracts as it moves from the air into each tiny water droplet. So the big rainbow that you see outside comes from all of the light being refracted through lots and lots of separate drops of water all at once. Now that you know how to make your very own rainbow, do you want to do a little rainbow hunting the next time it rains? If you do, you'll just need to make sure of three things. First, it should be raining, or just finish raining, because you need for there to be lots of water in the air. So don't forget your boots and a raincoat. Second, the sun needs to be shining brightly. And third, you need to stand with the sun behind you in order to see the rainbow in front of you. And the later in the day it is, the higher in the sky the rainbow will be. So if it's in the afternoon or early evening, make sure to look up. This next experiment is a little tougher, and we need to get some materials together to do it. So I think we should get started on it early before the sun goes away. You know that sitting in the sun will make you warm, and that warmth is a kind of energy. People use that energy for all kinds of stuff, from making beef jerky to powering their homes. And today, we're going to see how we can use the sun's energy for ourselves. It's a beautiful, sunshiny day where we live. My favorite thing about nice days like this is the feeling of the warm sun on my face. But did you know, aside from just feeling nice, the sun's warmth is a kind of energy? You're right, Squeaks! We use energy from the sun's light and heat for lots of things. When you use the energy from the sun, that's called solar power, because solar is just another word for things that come from the sun. Have you ever seen a bunch of big, flat, black rectangles on top of a building? Those are solar panels. They take sunlight and turn it into electricity. Some people also collect the heat from the sun to warm their homes or heat their water. I even built Squeaks! to run on solar power. You know, Squeaks, this warm, sunny day got me thinking about a cool project that we could do together to use the sun's energy ourselves. Do you wanna try it out? 
Okay, let's do it. We're going to build something called a solar updraft tower. Since it has the word solar in it, you already know that it has something to do with the sun. Updraft just means a kind of wind where the air moves up. And you know what a tower is. So can you guess what our solar updraft tower will do? It'll take sunlight and use that to make air move upward through a tower and spin a paper pinwheel. You can try this project at home too. First, you'll need three clean tin cans with the tops and bottoms cut off. You'll also need some tape, a piece of wire like a paper clip, some thumbtacks, and two books that are about the same size. They need to be pretty big books. Then then ask a grown-up to cut a piece of paper into a square, 15 centimeters or about 6 inches on each side. And most importantly, you need a sunny day. Now we're going to build the tower. First, stack up the cans and tape them together really well. Next, bend the wire or paper clip into an arch shape, like this, and tape it to the top of the tower of cans. Then get a grown-up to help you attach the thumbtack to the top of the wire arch with tape like this. Now we'll fold the pinwheel. Grab your square paper and have a grown-up help you cut diagonally from the corners. Don't cut all the way through the paper though. Stop cutting about this far from the middle. Once all the corners are cut, fold them like this and tape them together in the center. Then get your grown-up to stick the pinwheel onto the pointy end of the tack. And our tower is ready. All we have to do now is put the can tower on top of the books so there's a gap at the bottom and set the whole thing near a window where there's direct sunlight. So the sun is shining straight through the window. It might take a while, depending on how warm and sunny it is where you are. So be patient and check on your tower every now and then. After a while, something really cool will happen. Whoa, the pinwheel is spinning. It's not magic, Squeaks. It's science. When the sun shines on the cans, they get hot. Some of that heat travels through the metal to the inside of the cans. So there's hot air inside the tower and hot air rises. Squeaks, do you remember when we learned about how hot air balloons work? Well, this is the same kind of idea. Air might seem like it's made of nothing, but it's actually made of lots of little tiny particles, way too small to see. When sunlight heats up the air inside our tower, the heat makes those tiny little particles start to bounce around faster and faster and spread out. Warmer air that's more spread out like that will move upwards, so it's on top of the cooler air that's less spread out. It's a lot like how a plastic spoon will float on water. In our tower, that means that when the sun warms up the air inside the cans, the warmer air will move upward through the tower and make the paper pinwheel spin as it passes by. Then cooler air comes in through the gap at the bottom of the tower, gets heated up, and rises. So there's a constant flow of warm air that keeps the wheels spinning. We've made a solar updraft tower. There are some places in the world where they actually use giant solar updraft towers to generate electricity. So the next time you feel the warm sun on your face, Remember that it's more than just a nice feeling. Sunlight is a powerful and useful source of energy. It's the same energy Squeaks uses to get around. Wow, Squeaks. Just think how powerful the sun must be that it can make our wheels spin and keep us warm from millions and millions of miles away in space. For our next experiment, hmm, I think by then it'll be time for a snack break. What do you think? Well, guess what, Squeaks? We can turn snack time into an experiment too. An oven uses heat to cook food, and as we've learned, the sun makes heat too. And with the right tool, we can gather that heat to cook food. Here's how you can build an oven to cook using the sun. Hi everyone, Squeaks and I have a problem. We were about to start cooking lunch, but then we saw that it's the perfect day to be outdoors. We're trying to figure out how we can cook and play outside at the same time. I know we can build a solar oven. Solar ovens are a lot like kitchen ovens. They're basically boxes that heat up inside and that are great at keeping the heat trapped inside of the box. If you put food inside of the oven, the heat cooks the food. What makes it a solar oven? Well, kitchen ovens use electricity or burn gas to make themselves hot. A solar oven uses solar energy, or energy from the sun. When light from the sun shines into a solar oven, it heats up the inside of the box. This means they're perfect for cooking outside. You can make a solar oven using materials you might already have. Hey Squeaks, will you help me design our oven? Awesome, I've brought some materials for us. First, we have a pizza box to use as the main box of the oven. 
And I have some tinfoil too. Tinfoil is a great insulator or something that's great at trapping heat. So it can help us to keep the heat inside the box. I'll cover the inside of the box with tinfoil and tape it down. Hmm. Now we have our first design challenge. We need sunlight to get into our box, but if we open the box, all the heat will get out. Is there something that we could change about our box to get sunlight in while still keeping the box closed? A window, that could work. It will be like how windows can let sunlight into a building even if they're closed. I'll make a flap so we can open and close our window. And kids, make sure that when you're cutting your flap, that an adult is around to help you. Normally, windows use glass to separate the inside and outside. We want something clear like glass that will let sunlight in, but that doesn't break as easily. What do you think we should use? <laughs> plastic wrap is a great idea. We can cover the window in plastic wrap and tape it around the edges to keep the heat inside the oven. Now, sunlight can get into the oven and heat up our food. Uh-oh. I think there's another problem with our design. The only sunlight that can get into our box is a light that shines straight into our window, and that's not enough. So here's our second design challenge. How can we get more light into our solar oven? I've got an idea. Did you know light can bounce? If you shine a flashlight in a mirror, the light will bounce off it and back at you and it does this on more than just mirrors. Anything with a shiny surface can make light bounce or reflect. So if we want to reflect some sunlight into our solar oven, we need something shiny. The tin foil. The tin foil is very shiny. We can try using that to reflect the sunlight into the box. Thanks, Squeaks. I'll tape some tin foil to the section of the lid we cut out to make our window. If we angle this just right, the sunlight aimed at the tin foil should bounce off of it and shoot straight into our oven. We can use this pencil to hold that lid at the right angle. Next, we'll put the food on a plate inside to cook. That leaves us with our third and final design challenge. Which color plate should we use? We have a bunch of paper plates from Sam the Bat's birthday party. We have white plates and black plates. I'm glad you asked. The colors matter because dark colors heat up in the sunlight faster than lighter colors. You might have noticed this if you've ever worn a dark shirt outside in the summer. We probably want a dark color plate to help us heat up our food then, don't we? I agree. Let's use the black plate. That one is darkest. It looks like we're ready to test out our solar oven. How about some pizza bagels? We're gonna head outside to test our solar oven. Depending on what happens, we might make changes to our design. Maybe we'll paint the entire inside of the oven black or find a shiny mirror to help reflect more sunlight into the window. What ideas do you have to make our oven better? Ask a grown up to help you build your own design and test it out. What do you wanna do after that, Squeaks? Ah. Squeaks says his favorite thing to do after snack time is art. You're not gonna believe this, Squeaks but we can make art time into an experiment with the sun too. Do you remember when I brought over that special paper that changes color in the sun and we used it to make pictures with leaves and sticks? Well, I think I have some more of it at home. Let's watch this video to remind us how to use it and then we can go get it and start having fun. Wow, I love that one. And this one right here, that's pretty funny. Oh, squeaks. This is so much fun. I think I want to hang this one in the fort. Oh, hey everyone, Mr. Brown here. Squeaks and I just got back from a nature walk and we're looking at the pictures we took together. It's such a nice sunny day today and I couldn't help but get outside. I know, right? Spending time outdoors is one of my favorite things too. And that reminds me, Squeaks, I've been meaning to show you something awesome. You all are gonna love it too. Let me see. Check this out. It's called a sun print, and it's art I made using nothing but this paper, some water, and light from the sun. It is cool. Do you have any idea how it works? 
Oh, good idea. But there's no paint or printer ink on this paper. Instead, it works because of some cool science. How about I tell you a story? The art I made is called a cyanotype or it's sometimes called a blueprint or sunprint depending on who you talk to. But no matter what you call it, it's one of the oldest ways to take a picture. The first person to figure out how to make a cyanotype was Sir John Herschel, and he did it way back in the 1840s. Then his family friend, named Anna Atkins, used paper just like this to make pictures of seaweeds. And you know what? Her pictures ended up in a book about plants that live in the water, and it was the first book ever to have photos. Aw, oh, Squeaks, that's kind of you. But I'm not sure my cyanotype will make it in any books. Making your own cyanotype is actually pretty easy. You just take this special paper and cover it up with whatever you want to take a picture of. I wanted to make a picture of leaves, so I just took some leaves I found outside with squeaks and set them on the paper like this. If you're using leaves like I did, it might be helpful to use some rocks or other heavy things to hold the leaves down. Then, you put your paper out in the sunshine until it changes color, after anywhere from five to 20 minutes. Next, you just use some water to rinse the paper off. And check it out. The part of the paper that got lots of sunlight is dark blue, but the part that was hidden under the leaves is a lot lighter. How does it work? Well, it's all about the ingredients on our cyanotype paper. This paper is covered in a special mixture of ingredients, and normally, these ingredients wash away when you get the paper wet. But when you put the paper outside on a sunny day, something awesome happens. The ingredients change. They react to the sun and with each other to make something new. In this case, they turn into a special blue dye called Prussian blue. And Prussian blue can't be washed away by water. So, when I rinsed my paper off, I rinsed away all the old ingredients, but the Prussian blue stayed behind. And then, I could see the blue color where sunlight hit my paper, and white or light blue where it was covered up. I agree, Squeaks. It's so fun that we can make pictures just with some special paper and the light from the sun. What do you say we go and find a special place in the fort to hang up our sanitite? Okay, Squeaks. I think we have our day of fun in the sun all planned out. We hope you'll try out some of these sunny day experiments next time it's sunny where you live. But don't forget to put on sunscreen before you start. Speaking of, I better go put on some sunscreen and grab my sunglasses. Let's go, Squeaks. Thanks for joining us today. If you wanna keep having fun in the sun with Squeaks, me, and all of our other friends, be sure to hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time on SciShow Kids.